Hey everybody, Dustin DePirac here, calling this Jeremy Price, and uh, yeah, wow, that was something else, wasn't it? Um, Indiana survives and advances to, you know, steal the cliche and whatnot, um, somehow, some way, in a game they really didn't play well for most of the time, yeah. uh, they managed. They pulled it out, made some just huge plays down the stretch, uh, nail biter as you can imagine, uh, you know, a, a, as you saw, but um, Victor Oladipo drains a three. Puts him up with 15 seconds left, puts him up by four. Uh, a couple of huge defensive plays, managed to get Khalif Wyatt to miss, uh, you know, take a kind of desperation shot. Also had a you know, the defensive play before, although the depot series was pretty critical. They got uh, Rick Rock here, Hollis Jefferson to, uh, to airball a bad shot. And uh, they survived. They move on 58 to 52. Didn't look great. Scary for a lot of moments. Definitely seemed like maybe the, uh, you know, the, the kind of title or bust season was uh, coming to an end, but they managed. They pulled it out. Yeah, it was one of those weird games where as much as IU struggled and it felt like probably at times they were down 10, 15, 20 points mm -hmm. or something, they were really only down three, four, five, six points yeah. at most in the second half, and it really just needed one burst. The thing was mm -hmm. that they waited till the last two and a half minutes to have yeah. that burst. Right. 10-0 down the stretch, 10-0 uh, in the last 3-0-9. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it, it, it took a long time. It took them a while just to, to hit anything. Uh, Outside shots were hard, hard to come by. Inside shots were hard to come by. I mean, they were missing, missing some bunnies, missing some layups. Uh, and you know, Temple, Temple defended extremely well. I mean, Temple really got up into Indiana, made it difficult for them to do anything they wanted to do. Played very, very physical with Cody Zeller, and uh, knocked him off the block. I mean, he, you know, they 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 fouled a lot. They fouled a bunch. Um, but uh, you know, I think Jake O'Brien and Anthony Lee both had four fouls uh, and you know spent a lot of time on the bench. But they just got after him, made it difficult for challenge everything Indiana tried to do, and just kind of pretty much dared them to say, "Okay, just I guess call whatever you want. We're just going to keep being physical." Yeah, and really the story of this game up to those last three or four minutes was the fact that Temple was the aggressor. They were the mm, one that absolutely. dictated this game. The game was played at their pace, their style, mm. their way throughout, and Indiana was really on its heels. I thought and mm. very the reactive. Whole time. Yeah. to what was going on. I mean, at no point did I feel like Indiana was asserting itself uh, other than they were getting the ball inside just enough to mount some foul trouble. That was right. kind of the one saving grace as it turned oh, out. Oh, no, absolutely. They, they, they kept going inside. They kept getting guys in foul trouble, and they kept getting to the line. I mean, and, and I don't know what their final free throw total numbers were, but, uh, you know, they got a lot of points there just to stay in it even when they weren't making shots, even when they weren't going get, to getting anything to fall. Uh, they kept going in it. And at a certain point, some guys, I think, really sort of stepped up, I mean, especially really on the defensive end. Uh, you wrote at length about the, uh, the Christian Watford block. Very well might be the play of this year, maybe the play of his career, and that even includes the, the, the you know, the watch shot three-pointer against Kentucky. I still think... That's still the one, considering all the symbolic uh, value, but that's the reason they keep going. If they fall behind four points at that point with an easy layup, I don't know if they come back from that. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons the watch shot was important against Kentucky, but if Indiana goes on to win a national title this mm -hmm. year, then you could very well look back at that play as the saving play of, the, of this mm -hmm. tournament, uh, kind of the defining moment. And for Indiana's sake, it kind of needs to be Mm, yeah, uh, kind of a jumping off point. Uh, Remy Abel said after the game that you know he got Watford got the block and then he got the rebound on the follow attempt after that, and he said from there we just took off and mm. and and really Indiana needs to take off through the rest of this tournament from that. I mean, yeah. you know every team has a game where they struggle, they stumble, it's difficult, it kind of comes down to the wire. It seems like I mean mm. I, don't, I can't recall a team that won a national championship that where didn't that have wasn't one of those games. The yeah. case so. Mm. You know, maybe this was it for Indiana, but because if, if they have another game like this where they're this passive, mm -hmm. again, it's not going to end well. Yeah. I want to go forward from that, but I do want to stick on that point in, in terms of, uh, you know, them having to get better and them having to, this has to be their one game that they just sort of wake up from. I, I think the one thing that you got to be concerned about, and, and we said this a few weeks ago, and it seemed to come back in the haunt of the day, they look heavy legged, I'd say. They look tired. They look a little bit beat, and this has to somehow re-energize them. I mean, that, that's tough to do. When you've lost your legs, it's tough to get them back. I don't know if they have, but 
they're not moving the same way they used to. I mean, I don't know. I mean, may, do you see that too, or am I, am I just making that up in my own head? I think there's some fatigue there. In my opinion, uh, you know, it, it's really hard to tell, especially against a team like Temple, how much of it is physical fatigue and how much of it is mm. just the way Temple's forcing you to play and mm. the physical nature of the game. And, yeah. and the fact that this game wasn't, uh, you know, we talked a lot about coming into the NCAA tournament that the game might be more free flowing. Uh, Fouls would be maybe whistled a little differently than they were during Big Ten play. Mm. That really wasn't the case today. This no, Temple was very plays like much a Big Ten game, a yeah. Big Ten style of game. Yeah, and I mean there there are East Coast teams that play like Big Ten teams that that are not. It's not necessarily it's not the same style of play. Like I mean the score was Wisconsin esque. This wasn't a Wisconsin scout style game. You know you, you can't look and you know Wisconsin doesn't have a Khalif Wyatt. They don't they don't have players like that. They don't. Right. But this is sort of like you know kind of playground tough guy rules, and that's how. That's how Temple got after it. I mean, Khalif Wyatt was just, um, you know, I mean, that guy's just tough. Yeah. But, you know, but still, it still is exhausting. It still takes it out of you. It, it still takes, um, it, it still put Indiana in a pace that they didn't want to be at. And my, my concern is really more than the physical fatigue. My concern is the mental fatigue. I thought mm. Indiana looked like a mentally fatigued team today. Yeah. Uh, they they really you struggled to kind of get that bit. edge, yeah. to kind of get that right mentality, and they finally got it when they had to have it yeah. in those final few minutes. But you can't keep relying on that to, to carry you through. And they were pretty good in the first probably eight minutes or so when they built that yeah. ten point lead as well. But uh, you know they they didn't sustain that, and then mm. they really struggled to kind of recapture that. Mm. And maybe a little bit of that had to do with uh, Jordan Hall's absence as well because that was a yeah. factor. Today. It seemed like he definitely. Um, it, it, they, they looked a little bit lost without him. Yogi Fair looked a little bit harried without him on the floor, and it seemed like, you know, it, I even talked to Yogi Fair a little bit about this yesterday about the, his relationship with Jordy. Fantastic, um, about his relationship with Jordy and just what Jordy's done for him. And he said, you know, he just he he, he you know he settles me down basically. He you know makes sure that I don't push it too much, that I don't you know. Uh, just that he keeps it steady, more or less. I can't remember exactly the word he said, but that's what it looked like. Yogi just seemed to be a little bit hairy, a little, trying to do too much. He threw one pass. Uh, I think that he missed Cody Zeller pretty badly on for a turnover. And uh, you could just see he was just getting antsy, just getting, you know, and, and, and he kind of needed Hulls back. And it seemed like everybody felt better with Hulls on the floor. I mean, you know, they're... They seem to they seem to flourish in different styles. I mean, I think that's kind of what makes them good. What makes them a good pair. But this is one of those games where if, if you were trying to play it too fast, if you were trying to make hero passes, if you were trying to push it too much, uh, it was going to be a problem. Hulls seem to you know they seem to do a better job of working the ball around, uh, making smart passes, making taking smart shots when Hulls was in the game. And uh, you know it was definitely inspirational when he came back out. Inspirational then when he came back out after the injury. You know, led the team back out on the floor. He didn't play, you know, immediately. Uh, but when he came in and hit some shots, it seemed like it really sparked them and got them going. Yeah, I say it was inspirational that he came back. It was a lot more inspirational to he see one shots. of his shots go through the yeah. bottom of the net. When he hit a three and then he hit the pull-up jumper at the top of the, uh, you know, right above the foul line. Those were two big shots and got them, them going. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, what sort of changed in terms of a strategic idea that changed the game late uh, was basically you know, they'd been guarding, you know, uh, Wyatt with Oladipo and, and Remy Abel and Will Sheehy most of the game. And Oladipo got the assignment a lot. But they finally just decided to face guard him because nobody else was scoring for, for Temple. I mean, uh, I think uh, uh, Anthony Lee had 10, uh, Hollis Jefferson had 8, nobody else had more than 3. Uh, Scooty Randall, uh, Jake O'Brien, uh, Will Cummings all over today, field goal wise. And they just kind of decided, okay, we're just going to just straight face guard him. We're making it really hard to get the ball. And it did. I mean, uh, Wyatt didn't have another bucket after the 630 mark. And that's huge. I mean, he had, he had two free throws, but that was it. Uh, and Wyatt is their guy. He had 31 of their 52, which is just a crazy percentage. Um, but I thought that really sort of changed the game when they finally decided we're just going to hug the guy if we have to. Yeah, and, and they finally got him out of his comfort zone. Uh, Victor Oladipo said uh, in the postgame press conference that, uh, you, you know, you can't speed Wyatt up. You know, he plays at his own pace, and there's nothing anybody can do to, to kind of change that. You know, you're not going to get him out of his rhythm or whatever. Well, how you get him out of his rhythm is to not let him get the ball in the first place. And when he right. does get the ball, if the shot clock's running down, then he's forced to speed up and play at mm. a pace he's not comfortable with. And yeah. that's what Indiana finally was able to do in that last five or six minutes was mm. put him in, in, in positions where he was no longer comfortable, where he couldn't just take his time and back somebody down. Or, right. you know, if something wasn't there, he couldn't reset or anything. He, he was in a lot more pressure-filled kind of situations. And mm. that turned out to be a lot better for Indiana. Yeah, and the other occasion you, you talked about him not getting the ball, uh, probably maybe the best individual um, sort of strategic idea. When Temple's got the ball, they had to call a timeout with about 54 seconds left because they couldn't get the ball to Wyatt in the first place because Oladipo was face guarding. So they inbound the ball at about half court. Um, 
one they attempt one inbound to Oladipo knocks it out of bounds, takes two more seconds off the shot clock. After that, Farrell comes off the inbounder, doubles double teams Oladipo, uh, forces Will Cummings, who was the inbounder, to throw the ball into Hollis Jefferson, way in the backcourt with about seven seconds to go on the shot clock. Watford's guarding him, just kind of rides him up uh, all the way. Hollis Jefferson tries to pull up, you know, right elbow, air balls it. And that's your game right there. Right, right after that, Indiana gets the ball back. Oladipo drills the three with 15 seconds left. Uh, and that's your ball game. That's the game clutcher. And that was kind of the biggest thing. They just said, they, we're not going to, you know, Temple called a timeout so they could get the ball right to Wyatt. Indiana said, no, you're not getting the ball right to Wyatt. Somebody else is going to have to beat us. And there's your game. And Indiana, you know, basically won this game with defense. You know, Indiana mm-hmm. didn't win this game with brilliant offense. They won it no. with defense. The Watford block shot. The defense of Oladipo on Wyatt and that uh, fourth shot up against the shot clock there by mm. Hollis Jefferson. So, yeah. you know, the question going down the stretch was could Indiana get the stops necessary to win this game? And as it turned out, the answer Finally. was yes. Finally they did. Uh, but, yeah, that's um, so that's it. They're going on to D.C., play Syracuse next. It's going to be an interesting ball game when they, uh, you know, go up against that 2-3. But uh, they've got some time to rest, think about it, get ready for that zone, and, uh, and Victor Oladipo's going home. So, all right. Thanks, everybody.